What is up, CUSA family? It is me, Cody Andrini, the marketing coordinator here at CUSA Federal Credit Union. Super excited to come to you with the newest episode of our vlog series. So as we know, we have been doing a lot of talking about um, financing vehicles. We talked about budgeting. We've talked about credit scores, getting your credit scores right. We've had a lot of really great topics. And this month, I want to tackle probably one of the most exciting um, and sometimes the most scary topics. Um, and that is buying your first home. And it is such an exciting time. Uh, and I've recently bought my first home. So just from experience, it is the most exciting. Also the most nerve wracking time. Uh, it's just a really, really interesting season of life to be in when you're ready to buy your first home. And so we want to give you a little guidance and we want to just kind of let you know a little bit about what's going up there. Um, now I will say this, this is not a complete exhaustive list of things to know before you buy a home. Uh, we just don't have the time for that. But what we do have is financial counselors here at the credit union. What we do have is a mortgage lender here in house that can help you and can walk you through these steps. So if you have, if you need more information, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would love to help you, uh, you know, in more in depth in person. With that being said, I want to hop right into the topic because we have a lot to cover. So first thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about three types of mortgages that exist. Not that these are the only three types, but that these three are the most common. And these are, these are the three that you're going to hear most. So the first of all, you got your conventional mortgage with a conventional mortgage. You put down 20% and you finance 80% and that's conventional. FHA is a little different. FHA, you only put down 3% and you finance 97% of the home. And then the third type is a rural development. And if you like to kind of get out of the city and you know maybe live on the outskirts of town, live in a rural area, this may be the option for you. Rural development is backed by the federal government and what it does is it gives you where you can buy. It'll tell you where, and most of the time, of course, it's rural, it's outside of the city. It's not, you know, you're not gonna get a downtown city home. Um, but the thing with this one is it's 0% down. They will finance 100% of the home. Now, these last two options, I will say FHA is the most common um, just because it is easily attainable. The 3% is obviously a lot easier to come across than the 20% and you don't have the restriction of having to buy in a rural area. But even with the rural development or with the FHA, you will have what's called PMI or private mortgage insurance. And it'll just be added into your mortgage. And it's just any time that you put down less than 20% on a mortgage, you will have to pay PMI for a period of time in this loan. Just some things to know. Now we'll say this, what we don't want to do guys is throw out renting and just say that renting is trash and you're tossing your money away. In some cases, that is not the case. There are some cases because finances, as we know, are not one size fits all. So I don't want to give you a blanket. If you're renting, you're throwing your money away. We want to, we want to think this through. And before we go into purchasing a home, we want to make sure that we are in the best financial position because this is a huge investment. This is a, this is one of the most expensive things that you will buy in your lifetime. So we want to do it right. So what, what I'm not advocating for is for you to ditch your landlord and go buy you a house today. What I am advocating for is let's look at what it takes and let's get you ready so that you can own your own home. Cause there are definitely perks and benefits to home ownership that you don't get when you're renting. So how do we get ready for it? The, one of the most important things I'm telling you, we got to get this right. Credit scores. That's why I've we've been talking about credit scores forever. Credit scores. 620 is about a good starting point. You won't hire than that because of course the higher your credit score is, the better interest rate you're going to get. But also you can get something, you know, you can get into a mortgage situation with less than a 620, um, you know, maybe as low as 580, 
But the issue with that is there's going to be more stipulations. You're going to have to be able to explain away why that credit score is that low. They may require you to take extra classes to learn financial literacy. There may be more obstacles to go through if your credit score is a little bit lower than that. So what we want to do is make sure that, guys, we're paying our bills on time. If you're thinking in the next couple of years you want to start looking at, at paying buying a house, pay your debt down. Pay them on time. All these things that, that make up the bulk of our credit score. Stop applying for new credit and just give your credit time to build up and get ready for this, what you're getting ready to do, because it's huge and it's exciting and it's nerve wracking. Um, I'm speaking from experience. I just bought my first home and it was literally the proudest moment of my little life. But at the same time, I was just like, ah, so it's, it's a lot. It, it just, it's a lot. Um, but if you come into it with your credit scores in check, that, that's just that much easier and you'll be able to negotiate that much more and you'll be able to get a better rate and that's what we want. So we talked about credit scores. Now I wanna to talk to you about this and again, not to, not to say that I'm advocating ditching your landlord today, but just to put in perspective, because some of us, we, we rent because we're scared to make the jump to home ownership. And I just want to, I want to read you a little chart, right? And I'm just want to give you a little bit of information about when you're renting, how much money you're spending. So now the lower end of this chart says monthly rent, $500. I don't know where they live in at. It ain't no rent for $500 around this place. So I'm gonna bump it up. So let's say your, your rent's 900. That's a good average. That's a good average 900 you know, depending on where you live and, and how big of an apartment you need. $900 over the course of 10 years is $108,000. Over the course of 20 years, it's 216000 Meaning, and then 30 years, because 30 years is a, you know, pretty common mortgage term. 30 years, $900, that's 324000 so we can see that really paying rent over time adds up. And in some cases, you could have bought a house. So what do we do then? We talked about we get our credit scores right. We count the cost. We, we realize that, okay, I'm buying this house. So I need to make sure that I'm not buying more house than I can afford because, hey, things are going to come up. You're going to have... Uh, issues. You may need to call an electrician. You may need to call a plumber. Trust me, I know. Um, but you know, things happen. And when you're renting, you can call the office and say, hey, come fix your stuff. When it's your house, you are the office and you are the one that fixes your stuff. So we need to make sure that we're able to balance and we have, a, we have enough to where we're not house poor, which means the house owns us. We want to own our house, not have our house own us. We don't want to be house poor. What we want is to have a house that we can afford and that we can maintain. And why do we want this? Because when you're renting, you're not gaining any equity. When you're buying a home, you are investing. You are putting money in something that's going to give you equity, something that, you know, is going to earn you money. Because especially if it's your first time, you know, a lot of times when you buy your first home, that's not your forever home. And so you want to put yourself in a situation where you're putting your money into something that you can sell and make money, that way you move up to the next house that will be maybe your forever home. Maybe not. But you're, you're, you're putting your money somewhere where it's working for you. Whereas when you're renting, your money's going to the landlord. It's going to their property, it's going to them. So there's also tax cuts. There's tax cuts because you're paying on this home, you're paying this interest, you're paying your, your property taxes, so you get a tax break which you don't get whenever you are renting. So a few things, you know, a few things to, that we need to understand though when we're going into a home. I talked about, you know, if you put less than 20%, then, you know, you have to deal with PMI. Also, you may have HOA, Homeowners Association. If you choose to live in a neighborhood that's got an HOA, those are dues and fees that you have to pay. That's something that you need to know about before you go into it. Homeowners insurance. You will have to have homeowner's insurance. A lot of places when you're renting, you may or may not need renter's insurance. It's always a good idea to have it, but it may not be required. 
But when you're buying a home, homeowners is required. You have to have a solid policy and you need to know what is in that policy. Whenever you have a homeowner's policy that you're buying, you need to sit down with your agent and have them explain to you what is in it, what is covered, what is not covered, and make decisions about how much you need and what is right for you and what you can afford. Some areas, especially down here in Louisiana, y'all, some areas are flood zones and you may be required to have a flood insurance policy. That may be an extra, an extra fee tacked on that we're, you're going to have to just pay for. Um, you know, we're in Louisiana. Floods happen, hurricanes happen, and you want to be protected in those events. So all these are things to think about when we're looking at our first home. And these are all things that you can speak with your lender and your realtor and your insurance agent. One thing that you don't want to, you don't want to do is be afraid to ask questions. Ask the questions. Y'all, I drove my realtor nuts. I'm just going to tell you, I was calling this dude asking him all kind of stuff. I called this dude asking why the, why the sky is blue. I don't know. I just need to know this information before I buy a house. So I'm going to ask you every question that I can ask you. And that's okay. Be in the know. Take control of this process. It's, it's again, scary. It's life-changing. It's so rewarding. It's so exciting. And then when you own your own home and you get the key to this house and you walk into this and this is your place and you don't have to listen to the landlord, it's just freedom. It's, it's wonderful. And then you're building equity. You're putting your money somewhere that's going to serve you in the future. And we're not just tossing away money on rent. We're investing in our future. It is exciting, exciting. And it is a great time to buy a home right now. And I want to let you know that CUSA Federal Credit Union wants to be your partner. We want to walk with you through this season of your life. And so because of that, we now have a partnership with Members First Mortgage and Members First Mortgage has come in so that we can offer you more mortgage options than ever. We wanna walk with you. We have people dedicated to help you get where you need to be. Applying for a mortgage has never been easier. You go to the website, www.cusafcu.com, and you click, we put a button on the homepage to apply for a mortgage. It takes you to this beautiful landing page. It gives you step-by-step -step what you're gonna need, what you can expect. And if you need to talk with someone, we are a phone call away, email away. We have people ready to help you. So it is exciting and it's scary and you don't have to do it alone because we will walk with you. That is the most exciting announcement for this month. We have been waiting for a while to announce this and make this public. And I'm going to be honest with you, we are proud of it. So you're going to see it on our Facebook. You're going to see it in this vlog. You're going to see it in your email because we want you to know that we are here and we are ready to help you own your first home. Super exciting, guys. We're gonna move on from here and we're gonna go ahead and get ready to wrap up this, this edition of the vlog. Guys, we really wanna know what you think. We wanna know how we can better help you. So I always say it and I'm gonna say it again. Like this, comment, let us know how, what financial topics we can help you with. Because we wanna help you, that's, that's who we are. We, are. we are not some bank, we are your credit union. And we want to address the financial topics that are going to help you. Guys, keep in mind, we do have the Memorial Day closure. We will be closed on Memorial Day. So make plans to uh, do your banking business before or after. And also remember that you can access your accounts online 24-7 through our free mobile banking app. It is called Touch Banking. You can download that from your App Store or from the Google Play Store, whichever platform you prefer. And then you can get in there, access, you can see what you've got, you can make your transfers, you can make remote deposits. If you have a checking account with us, you can handle it all online. You can also go to the website, you can go into our mobile banking there, and you can set up bill pays, you can make your transfers, check your balances, and so much more from the website as well. So we have you covered while we're closed on Memorial Day. Guys, that's all we have for this, this edition of the vlog. Y'all have a great week and we look forward to hearing from y'all. We look forward to helping you with your new mortgage. Have a great day.